All right, so now the question that I'm getting is after this NAR settlement, assuming that the judge um, approves it and all these new changes go into effect, what does this look like on a practical level? And so I'm getting a ton of questions from, from all of you and, and agents that I'm coaching as like, what does it actually look like? So I've been spending the last 24, 48 hours really trying to map this thing out. And I want to share with you my thoughts and how I believe the new model of how a deal will come together will look. All right. So I'm going to break it down both on the buy side and I'll break it down on the seller side. So I'm going to share my screen, jump into the iPad and I'll map this whole thing out. All right. So now let's just make sure that we're all clear, right? So right now we understand when we uh, list a house for sale that the listing agent is negotiating the total commission, right? And just for this, um, for this video, let's just say that that is the, the total commission is going to be 5%. And so right now, the way that it works, as you guys all know, is that listing agent is collecting the entire commission upfront negotiated with the seller. And then that listing agent, when they go and list that house inside of the MLS, they make an offer to any buyer's agent who is going to bring the buyer, right? So they have this buyer agent commission. And in this video, we're just going to say it's two and a half percent commission. And so that's all been negotiated up front. We all know that that is how it works today. And when that deal closes, that listing agent is co-oping or giving part of that commission, half that commission to a buyer's agent. What I believe will happen moving forward is what a lot of people are already talking about, and I agree with them, is simply the decoupling of commission. So let's, here's what I mean. Let's talk about what this looks like first on the seller side. So when an agent, we'll just say, when a listing agent meets with a seller and they talk about listing this house for sale, we'll just say uh, that this is going to be, we'll call it $300,000 house. What we're going to do or what we're going to see moving forward is, which I think is a, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out, but I think it'll be easier for listing agents to secure business because of the way that this is going to be structured is that this listing agent, when they're negotiating their compensation for representing that seller's home, is simply going to be, again, just an example, 2.5%. This is what they're going to focus on at the listing appointment. Instead of collecting or negotiating for a future buyer agent's commission, they're not going to have to do that anymore because all they're focused on is securing their fee for the services in which they provide to their client, the seller. And then at the same time, what I think will be really smart, which is what every good listing agent should do, is then set an expectation. They're going to set a really good expectation that, listen, before the old way, we would collect this 5 or 6% commission up front, and we would... Split that with an agent who were to bring the buyer. That's the old way. The new way says that you don't have to do that anymore, Mr. Seller. That what is likely to occur, what is likely is that when a buyer submits an offer on your property and they have an agent involved, that agent with inside of the offer is going to uh, ask for some type of compensation for bringing us that buyer or that offer. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you then, we can negotiate if we even want to pay them anything. You get to decide that based on the offer. You're not obligated to do anything. But in many, many cases, it will make sense that if a buyer agent is bringing us the best offer, and you say, wow, this is a great offer. Yeah, uh, I'd be happy to pay that buyer's agent their 2.5% fee or their uh, $5,000 fee, flat fee, or their 1.5% fee, or we can negotiate it. They're asking for this 2.5%. I'll give them 1.5%. And, 
and I'll accept their buyer's offer. And so that's, and then Mr. Mr. Seller, you get to negotiate that as a part of the offer negotiation process. And so as we're meeting with sellers, I think the new uh, conversation that we're going to have to have that quite frankly, should have been, we should have been having this conversation the entire time with sellers, but we have to, we first have to clearly articulate to sellers where can the potential buyer come from? So where is this buyer that we want to pay you a whole bunch of money for your house, right? That's what you want. Where are they going to actually come from? And it's up to us as the listing agent to say, listen, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, there's there's really two spots. There's two places that a buyer can, can come from. They can come from me and my efforts, me being the uh, the listing agent, which is what you want me to do. And again, uh, in this example, I'm going to charge 2.5% to represent you, Mr. Seller. And if a buyer, through my own marketing efforts, through my own marketing efforts, I go out there and procure a buyer who submits an offer on your property that you love and you want to accept that offer, maybe the listing agent charges another, I'm just making this up, right? Maybe they charge another uh, 1.5% to handle that buy side transaction on behalf of their seller. We're not talking about uh, dual agency. We're not talking about dual agency. We're talking about acting as that buyer's transaction coordinator and writing an offer for what we would call an uh, unrepresented buyer. So the buyer has no representation. You still are the fiduciary to the seller. And maybe that's how it's structured. That's, That's number one. And again, the fee structures in which you charge, again, are negotiable. So maybe you charge, maybe you charge, uh, just as a couple more examples, maybe under this first scenario, maybe you charge 3% as your listing fee. And if you go out there through your own marketing efforts, because I believe that in this new model, in this new world, uh, there'll be a lot more buyers that go directly to listing agents. And so when that happens, maybe you charge another 1%. Maybe you charge another, I'm just, again, making things up, $2,500 flat fee. Maybe some agents will charge zero. They say, listen, uh, I'm going to go out there and get us the buyer, and I'm happy to collect what it is that I charge you up front, and that's 3%. And that will help listing agents uh, secure more business, I believe. The second way that a buyer can come to fruition, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, is through another agent. You see, this doesn't go away based on the NAR settlement. There are still going to be agents that work with buyer clients, and we'll talk about what that looks like on the buy side in just a second, and they might bring a buyer to the property. And so if that happens, okay, again, 2.5% is what, I charge on the seller side. And that other agent, when they write an offer, they might ask for a 2.5% fee on their side too. Buyer fee. And in that case, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, if you decided that based on the offer and the numbers and they all make sense, then the total compensation in this case would be 5%. And so we have to explain this to the sellers to say, listen, there's one of two ways that a buyer is going to come to fruition on your property. And so I want you just to be prepared for that. You're not obligated to do anything, but this is what you should expect. So I think that's a really good expectation. And I believe that this that's uh, what it will look like on the seller side as you go out there and and continue to secure listings for your business that you're focused on the listing fee that you charge and we leave the buyer agent fee, well, we have to uh, moving forward, leave that open for negotiation. However, we're setting the expectation to the seller that says, hey, there's there's one of two ways that a buyer is gonna come and purchase your home through my own marketing efforts or by another agent. 
And here's what those two things look like based on what's going to happen here. All right. So that's the seller side. Now let's talk about uh, let's talk about the buy side. So based on the new rules, we have to have, which I think is super smart. I've been talking about this for seems like forever, that you're going to list a buyer under contract the same way you'd list a seller today, where the services that you offer are clear and what you charge for those services is also in writing. It's fully transparent. It's agreed to up front. Now, I want to talk about how to structure how the possible structure will be based on these buyer uh, exclusive uh, contracts with your, your, your buyer clients. Your board of realtors and your MLSs are already working on this, I'm sure. But here's what I most likely think those agreements will look like. You'll have uh, an exclusive buyer agency contract that most likely will have like two or three options. One will be where the uh, the buyer and you sit down, you have a valuable buyer consultation, which again, I'll have different trainings on that because that's another huge question I'm getting is like, hey, what does that buyer presentation look like? How do I, uh, how do I actually communicate my value proposition? I'll have other trainings on that. But you're going to have that buyer consultation and that buyer is going to agree to one of three things. One is you're going to ask, and I'll try to make this as clear as possible, seller for compensation. And that buyer would, well, I'll come back to the boxes in just a second. So that's one option under an exclusive buyer agency agreement that you and the buyer have an agreement that says, hey, here's uh, how much I charge. And I'm going to ask the seller to pay for uh, my compensation. Two, you might have, you're going to ask the seller or the listing agent for compensation. And under these, the buyer is not obligated to pay that commission. Buyer not obligated. That might be two, uh, the second option. So you're going to either ask the seller or the listing agent in option two. Option one, you're just going to ask the seller. And then three is where you're going to uh, ask seller or listing agent for comp. But if not, that the buyer is obligated to pay out of their pocket if you cannot get one or two. And so I believe that what most brokerage will uh, train their agents on is how to get option three on your contracts. And this is what we'll want the, uh, the buyers to sign. And this is what you'll really wanna focus on with your clients is to say, listen, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer client, I am going to try to go out there and ask the seller or the listing agent to cover my compensation. But if they cannot, that you set an expectation that that would be part of the buyer's closing costs moving forward. So that's what I believe your exclusive buyer agency agreements will most likely start to include. Now let's talk about the deal structure and what that most likely will look like. All right, so using this exact same example, so you represent your buyer who sees this home that's for sale, it's 300K. Well, based on the new settlement, we can uh, we could we can ask for just like we talked about the buyer agent as a part of the offer negotiation can ask for that seller to contribute funds to cover the buyer agent compensation. So depending on the market, it's all it's all negotiation, right? So if you're charging two and a half percent to represent your buyer client, and in this case that would be what seventy five hundred dollars in compensation. One way to do this is when you write your offer is to put that on top of the sales price. So you, you would write an offer for 307, 500 minus 7,500 in a seller concession, 
going back, this is for the buyer agent comp. And the seller gets a $300,000 net offer. Everybody wins. Now, yes, of course, the property has to appraise and all of that, but that's one way to do it. This is how we used to write up offers in a buyer's market where we ask the seller for seller uh, concessions. That's one way to, to structure an offer to get your buyer agent compensation covered. The other way to do it is if you can, through the negotiation, again, there's a million ways to do this, but if you were just to split this in half, and let's just say the, the buyer agent commission, $7,500, you can write an offer for uh, 303750, and this 3750 is what the seller is contributing, right? And then that net offer to the seller would be, let's figure that out. So 303750 minus 7,500. So then the seller net offer, in that case, if you were to split the buyer agent compensation to say, hey, buyer will, uh, because in this case, let me just make sure this is really clear. In this scenario, it's the buyer who is paying their agent's commission. In this scenario right here, let's just make sure that we're all on the same page. Under this scenario, it is indeed the buyer paying for their compensation because we've added the compensation on top of the sales price of what the seller wanted. So the seller is not paying for it in this case, okay? So this is, I think, gonna be common practice on how to help everybody uh, win in this scenario. So then the second option, right, is you split it. So I think that will be super common. That's what I'm talking about right now, where if this list price on this house is 300K, 3750, we raise the price to 303750. That's the buyer uh, paying half. And then the seller would have a $296,250 uh, offer because, right, they paid half the commission. 3750. This was paid for by the seller. And that's another way that you can structure these deals on the buy side. And then and then thirdly, right? Of course, if none of those if the seller just isn't willing, then the buyer would have this as a part of their closing cost, right? So the buyer in this situation, if they can't get the seller to pay for anything, then the buyer is going to have on their closing statement, they're going to have their down payment right? They're going to have their prepaids, taxes, uh, insurance, things of that nature. They're going to have buyer agent commission now, right? And that'll just be a, another line item on their closing statement. All that's going to equal their uh, cash due at closing. So that'd be the third way that these deals get structured. So when I think about this, and hopefully you look at this and say, okay, that probably is pretty viable. In fact, there are agents that operate their business like this right now. They're doing this right now. And it seems to be working extremely well. Why? Because the seller's certainly fine with it, right? Because the seller's going from a world where we're uh, collecting that entire fee up front, where that pretty much is going to go down uh, from day one, where you're meeting with sellers as a listing agent collecting uh, your fee only up front. And that if a buyer agent submits an offer, because you can't get the buyer yourself as a listing agent, then that buyer agent most likely will ask to get paid. They're providing a service that only makes sense. And that will be negotiable. So that the seller says, okay, I've got more transparency. I've got more control over the process. I can essentially protect my bottom line because I have more control. And I believe that this will be the new model of how real estate transactions are put together. But again, I don't have a crystal ball. Time will tell. But I think this is a very viable model uh, to see everybody in the marketplace, buyers being served, sellers being served, uh, real estate professionals able to continue to provide a high level of service to the consumers and for them to still have the opportunity to earn a great living in this industry. And I think this is a very viable option 
But again, I don't have a crystal ball, but this is a, a potential direction that I think we could go in.